<laughs> this shirt looks way better in person. Hmm. Load, computer, load. For anyone that watches this after effect, I'm just giving a minute for people to come in. Come into the live. This is good news. Hi. I know. I, I saw this news. I was reading a little bit about it, and then I thought I would go live, and we would talk about it, because I think there's more going on that meets the eye. <clears throat> So we'll get into that. And then everyone is talking about, I'm just killing time letting people come in. A lot of people are talking about Whoopi Goldberg also. That's a totally different situation. But my stance on that is, <clears throat> if you weren't aware of what happened with Whoopi Goldberg, she gave some comments that were talking about the, you know, the thing that happened in Germany, the Holocaust, saying that it wasn't about race. And a lot of people were really upset about it. She was suspended from ABC for um, two weeks, I believe. And here's my take on it. I don't I don't believe in like canceling someone because they have an opinion that you don't like. I thought what she said was really dumb and offensive. Um, and and I, I think that's fair. A lot of people are like, well, if it was a conservative, she would have been fired, which is maybe true. Um, what happened with Roseanne, I also disagree with that. But I also disagree with firing Whoopi Goldberg. I think her being suspended for two weeks was a way for ABC to say, look, we don't agree with what she said. You know, we're going to, we just want to make that known. We're going to do something about it, but she's not canceled. I don't believe in people being like canceled <clears throat> or fired for something that's stupid. This isn't Whoopi's first time. There's YouTube compilation videos of her. Interesting. I'll have to look at those. I remember I was watching uh, Hannity talk about her, and he's actually friends with Whoopi Goldberg, and um, he sort of had the same stance. He was like, "I don't, I don't really think that it was from a terrible place," but who knows? <laughs> I'll get started in just a minute. Is this a new day for CNN? I actually do think so, and I have a lot of reason to think so. And this is just the beginning. Maybe they'll start being honest. They used to be sort of honest. <clears throat> anyway, thank you everyone for joining. <laughs> okay, I'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm like, my throat's not doing well. Whoopi needs to be fired. I'm sick of her. <laughs> well, then don't watch her. <laughs> I can see the point she was trying to make. It simply was wrong and poorly expressed. Yeah, I agree with that. I think I, I, I also see the point that she was trying to make. I think it was really poorly worded. I think a lot of things, I, I think it came out wrong. She's not someone, the same thing about Chinese and Japanese people. I, well, a lot of people saying that we want her fired don't even watch the view. My, my whole thing is, the, let's do the market solution. Let's, if you don't like someone's point of view, speak about it publicly, call them out on it. Um, but then don't, don't watch their show. Like CNN. <clears throat> Nobody watches CNN. <clears throat> the true Karen. <laughs> okay, so CNN. Uh, to, this happened today. This just happened. Yeah, exactly. I also see the point that she was trying to make. I just think it was not worded well. That That's sort of where I think. And I, I also think, like, that's why I think, like, it's good that they, they came out and they did something. They're like, okay, we're suspending her for two weeks. <clears throat> because I think what happens, too, and I've seen this even with some of my friends, a lot of these talking points, like, a lot of people, they're trying to be provocative and they're trying to make a point. And they're saying things that it's just a huge misstep. And and we've gotten to we've gotten to a place where it's more acceptable to say things like that. If that makes any sense to you. Mm-hmm. 
Also, everyone, also everyone wants to be the victim and they want to say how their victimology is worse than this victimology, which I don't like the, the whole victim mentality. You don't understand how I feel because how I feel is this and it's not the same as this situation. Okay, let's talk about Jeff Zucker. So on Wednesday morning, CNN President Jeff Zucker resigned from his post after the internal investigation into disgraced former CNN anchor Chris Cuomo revealed that Zucker was having an ongoing consensual relationship with one of his colleagues at the media network. Now, keep in mind, he's not married. He has been divorced for a little while. Jeff Zucker. <clears throat> the New York Times first reported it wasn't just about the Holocaust grouping people by their skin color. Yeah, that's not cool. All of it's not cool. I don't like when you group anyone with their skin color. That's in my opinion, that's that's the R word. That's saying that everyone with the skin that's saying that everyone with a certain skin color is having the same experience, which isn't that mm, a little ist. Okay, the New York Times first reported the story after obtaining an internal CNN memo Zucker sent to CNN employees. So this is a portion of that memo that he sent out. He said, as a part of the investigation into Chris Cuomo's tenure at CNN, I was asked about a consensual relationship with my closest colleague, someone I have worked with for more than 20 years. I acknowledge the relationship evolved in recent years. I was required to disclose it when it began, but I didn't. I was wrong. As a result, I am resigning today. I went to CNN in January of 2013. Together, we had nine great years. I certainly wish my tenure here had ended differently, but it was an amazing run and I loved every minute. Okay, man, the R word is a no-no on the YouTube and Twitch. I just don't like saying it a lot. I really just don't. Um... So I, I think there's a lot more going on here. And apparently, like, because if these were two adults that just worked together and this was consensual, I don't see what the problem is. And, okay, they didn't disclose it. What were they supposed to report it to HR? Maybe they were. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, there, there's more going on. And this was discovered into the investigation with Chris Cuomo. And something you should know about CNN Thank you. I wasn't sure how it looked on camera. It looks, I felt like it looked cuter in person. It's kind of 70s. I, I think maybe I like it. Thank you. Uh, it's interesting too because. Thank you. It's interesting too because 2000, so he, Mark, or Jeff Zucker, I always want to call him Mark Zucker. Jeff Zucker came on board at CNN, came on board CNN 2013 and that is actually when around the time like probably a little bit after when CNN tar started to take a turn they used to be an organization that was maybe a little bit left of center and then afterwards oh Lance said I worked with my ex-wife we weren't allowed to work in the same um I think you said in the same division or in the same area Whoopi's name is Karen Johnson. <laughs> well, the I mean, the view is is known. Like a lot of those ladies, they they have they are so leftist. You can go so far left that you actually turn into what they say that far right extremists are. Like I really think that's what happened, and I think that's what happened to Whoopi. And one of the things, why did I just lose light? One of the things that hi Stephen. One of the things that what the heck just happened to my lighting? Let me fix this. One of the things that uh, ABC told Whoopi, they were like, you know what? Take some time to reflect or whatever it is that you need to do. Take this two weeks to do that and then come back. I think that's good because I do. I think you go so far left and you want to be against the right so much. And the right, to me, the right, right, look, <laughs> the right right now, we're, we're basically center. We're the ones that have the same we're sane in the membrane. We're not insane in the membrane. So I think in order to combat the right now, you have to be, excuse my language, but you have to be batshit crazy. And they end up saying things that are so, I'll just say the word, we're nine minutes in, that are so racist and so wrong in order to be against the right. And I think a lot of them go down that path. So I think it's good. Take some time, reflect, take a break. 
chill out. Think about what you're actually saying. 100 points for the Cypress Hill reference. <laughs> is, is that not true? That's why so many people, I just watched this viral video of a girl that was like, I've been a leftist my entire, the, I'll let that slide. I've been a leftist or I, I watched this video go viral and it's like, I've been a leftist my entire life, but I don't recognize the party anymore. They are so intolerant. And it's like every day you have to learn these new rules. It's like every single day there are brand new rules and there's a brand new grievance to be had that gets exhausting after a while. And they, they are so addicted to, I have to have a grievance about everything. I have to make a point about everything that they end up being the racist ones and the ones that are like authoritarian and a little dictatory they end up being that they end up being that beast that they say they hate and I think that happens a lot I think that might be what is happening with Whoopi Goldberg and what has happened for a while keep in mind she chose a Jewish last name Goldberg is a Jewish last name is the walking away thing still strong Oh, the walk away thing. Well, I don't think the hashtag is as popular as it was. Probably because uh, Brandon Strzok, who is the leader of that, he's had been, he was involved in a lot of January 6th stuff. We can talk about it again in a while, but I, he's had to lay low for a while due to legal stuff. So I don't think like that hashtag is still a thing. But a lot of people are talking about, yeah, because... I don't recognize the left anymore. And that's what happened with CNN. And it was around the time that Jeff Zuckerberg was in charge. Or Zucker I always conflate Jeff Zucker with Mark Zuckerberg. There's too many Zuckers and I can't keep up with it. And they're both very similar in my head for certain reasons. Anyway, um, but around the time that he he's the president of uh, CNN, in case you didn't know. Um, also CNN appears to have just a huge pervert problem, but he says someone I've worked with, I acknowledge the relationship evolved. I was required to disclose it at the beginning, but didn't, I was wrong. So there's a little bit more going on there, whether they worked in the same department and they weren't supposed to, or he is the president. Maybe, maybe he, you know, so he's in a position of power, which I think can be a little bit different, especially when you're the president of the entire organization. Who is this colleague? We have no idea. Did he, you know, help her out in certain ways that he wasn't supposed to? Who knows? But uh, CNN apparently has a, a problem with <laughs> a lot of the men that work there. And something you also have to know, Chris, so this was a part of Chris Cuomo's investigation. And uh, Chris Cuomo, we recently talked about how the viewership of the ratings have gone down or the viewership has gone down. 80 to 90 percent since this time last year so people just stopped watching cnn and one of the one of the biggest people that did bring in viewers was as much as i hate him chris cuomo a lot of people did watch his show he's not there anymore so now they're in even more trouble also they just had a big merger with time warner and the biggest stakeholder or the yeah the biggest um Stakeholder in this merger is John Malone, who has said he doesn't like the direction that CNN has gone in. They're just filled with propaganda. And he did say that he wants CNN to go back to what they were originally supposed to be, journalists. And he wants to go back to journalism, not this propaganda show that it is right now. And when, uh, when Jeff Zucker became the president of CNN around that time, that's when they started being the propaganda show and the let's just um, knock on conservatives all the time. Let's knock on Trump all the time. So maybe his lifeboat, yeah. Maybe this will be the beginning of a change uh, with CNN. They have no choice. Their ratings are completely in the can. Also, I don't know if you remember, but there was some controversy with Chris Cuomo a while ago. How much money is he leaving with? Yeah, I don't know. That That's interesting. Uh, so there was some controversy with Chris Cuomo way before this stuff, over a year ago at the beginning of the pandemic when he had COVID and he was seen out and he was supposed to be quarantining, quarantining in his basement with COVID. And it's all politics. They're going to act like they care soon. Someone gets their back. and <laughs> It should be a hashtag runaway. It really should. So Chris Cuomo, way back when that controversy happened, when he got busted, so on television, he's telling everyone, I'm quarantining in my, it might be too late, Lance. He's saying, I'm quarantining in my house. 
I'm in my basement, I have COVID, and then he was busted outside, no mask, with his, around all of his family, not social distancing, and uh, so he, and he got called out, they were like, wait a second, aren't you Chris Cuomo, aren't you supposed to be quarantining? So he cussed the guy out, who called him out, um, and later had to address this on a serious XM radio show, and while he was addressing this, he said, you know, he didn't like what he did for a living, he didn't like having to talk about propaganda. I can't remember his exact words. So he actually said this publicly and then he had to backpedal. Um, so that just goes to show that even, even some of the anchors that work on CNN admit that this is a network that is just run on propaganda and they're, they're told to have an angle before they start their show. There is a Zucker born every minute. Well, if someone is smart, they will go back to journalism. More people would watch them. But everybody knows that CNN is full of crap. Even liberals know that CNN is full of crap. That's why they don't get ratings anymore. That's a good point. Lance said, viewers can forgive you for being wrong, but they'll never forgive you for telling a lie. Yeah, it's one thing to make a mistake and to be wrong. And when you have a show every single day where you're having to talk about things, it's just inevitable that you're going to get something wrong. And it happens to everyone. And it's one thing to be wrong to say, hey, I was wrong about that thing. But when you're actively lying about something and you're doing it multiple times, that is a whole different thing. Speaking of, of CNN, so we were talking last night about Brian Stelter, who's on CNN, and CNN's brand is destroyed. They, and they did it to themselves, and and I wonder how much of this, and yeah, a lot of this happened under Jeff Zucker, so what's going to happen when he's not there anymore? Uh, speaking of CNN and, and their ratings, uh, as we know, I just said it earlier, their, their ratings are down like 80 to 90% than they were a year ago. News became entertainment when it went to 24-7. Yeah, and one of my favorite things that they call CNN, um, I can't remember who first said it, but they were like, we're not even calling them news anchors anymore. We're calling them content creators because that's just basically what they do. They're just creating content. It's not news. Um, they've also been big mad at Joe Rogan, George Costanza's Brian. <laughs> They've also been big mad at Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan just crushes everyone in viewership. Joe Rogan gets 11 million listens per episode. And CNN has been on this, this rampage about how Joe Rogan is so dangerous. It's misinformation. Brian Stelter on his show was like, I don't understand. Nobody's watching. We have an entire, we have an entire health room that, that, that does research. We have a whole health department. We have a whole research department we have all these departments and all these people checking information yet more people are watching a comedian that just talks yeah brian stelter that's the problem you have all of those departments all of these researchers all of this money all of these studios and you still get it wrong all the time you still lie that's the issue and you have no self-awareness zero that's why more people watch Joe Rogan because he's just having conversations, but at least they're honest conversations. He's not going into it with an agenda. It's my cat. He's not going into it with an agenda at all. He's just asking questions and people are talking and a lot of people find that very refreshing and very interesting because we're tired of being lied to. CNN have dedicated department for propaganda. They do, they have a whole propaganda department. And if you go through any journalism for dummies class they will tell you there's there's several types of ways to do journalism you can do point of view journalism where you know that would be like a tucker carlson where you know he's right wing and he's going to give you the facts and then he'll give you his opinion on it but you know that's his opinion or a lot of people here here are all the facts and then this is my opinion and then there's objective journalism where that's where you see a lot of local news where you have no idea what their political leaning are. You have no idea what their opinion is on the story. They're just giving you the information straight. And then you have propaganda. 
And that's basically when your opinion is slanted or you're not telling the whole truth because you have a, a, an agenda that you're going in with. And that's propaganda. And CNN is propaganda. Everyone knows that is what you learn in journalism school. So for anyone that says what they're doing is ethical and right, they know what they're doing is wrong because that's, that's journalism for dummies. But what's interesting about Joe Rogan is he's actually getting a lot of support from Hollywood. Speaking of CNN and all this stuff and ratings, he got support from The Rock, which we know is a huge leftist, was a big Bernie, no, not Bernie, a big Biden supporter, I believe. Kevin James, who's a comedian, just spoke out in defense of Joe Rogan. Even no, get away. Yes, I didn't have to spray her. Thank you, a Axie. So, so Kevin James, who I would have also guessed is on the left, has come out in defense of Joe Rogan and said, Joe, we go way back all these years and I've known you to be nothing but objective in seeking the truth. Thank you. Love you, brother. Eva Rage. At least I don't have to spray her good because I don't have a sprayer. You even had Jen Psaki during a press conference say that Spotify should be censoring more. If you're the person that wants to censor other people, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm not for like Whoopi Goldberg, you know, being fired. Like, I think it was good for ABC to say, hey, we don't agree with this. We're going to give her some time to think about her, her, her position on things. And then we're going to bring her back. That's why I think it's good. It's fair. It's you're not firing this person. And hey, if you if you think it's dangerous or whatever, don't listen to her. That's why I agree that Joe Rogan shouldn't be censored. You know, if you think it's bad, don't listen to it. Listen to something else. But don't take away people's option. I, I don't know. Who was it? It was, um, was it Noam Chom? No. There was a free speech advocate who was actually, shoot, who is it? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Noam Chomsky? No. There was a, a free speech advocate. Hold on. I want to say it was Noam Chomsky. May, I might be wrong. But I do know there was a free speech advocate who is actually um, Jewish who advocated that people that are basically Nazi apologists should have the platform to speak their opinion. And this was a person that was Jewish because he felt that free speech was that important. He wasn't saying that it was wrong. He wasn't saying that it wasn't wrong, but he was advocating for free speech. Okay, this might be it. Okay, uh, American linguist Noam Chomsky has said the same principles that led him to... ah. Okay, American linguist Noam Chomsky has said the same principles that led him to defend the free speech rights of genuine war criminals apply to embattled Bristol professor David Miller. Mr. Choms Chomsky, who is Jewish and a prominent Israel critic, was among hundreds of academics who recently came to Mr. Miller's defense in an open letter after fresh anti-Semitism claims. They slammed the unrelenting and uh, concerted efforts to publicly vilify impact of his free speech on the manipulation of narratives by lobby groups. I have strongly defended the right of genuine war criminals like Henry Kissinger, Walt Rostow, and others to spew forth their hateful and murderous propaganda in universities. This is a much milder case, and I think the same principles should, should apply. So this was a guy that's just for free speech for everyone. Interesting.
interesting. Oh, he actually spoke about Trump. Let's see what he said. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's not hard to understand why so many have turned to Chomsky for answers about Trump. So this was around like 2016. It's not hard to understand why so many have turned to Chom Chomsky for answers about Trump. Chomsky is well known for critiquing U.S. presidents from Ronald Reagan to George W. Bush. Last spring, he heralded a rightward shift in the Democratic Party, saying America's two parties have collapsed into one faction, both targeting moderate Republicans. Interesting. Trump, you may recall, garnered votes from many previous Barack Obama supporters the following fall. That's very true. Perhaps Chomsky's most permanent qualification, pertinent qualification is his, his prediction he made six years ago in an interview with Truth Digs' Chris Hedges. He said, this is really interesting. So this is before, this is six years before 2016. He said, if somebody comes along who is charismatic and honest, this country is in real trouble because of the frustration, disillusionment, the justified anger, and the absence of any coherent response. Wow, comparing contemporary delusionment in the U.S. to that in late Weimar, Germany? We will be told that white males are persecuted minority. We will be told to have to defend ourselves and the honor of this nation. Military force will be exalted. People will be beaten up. This could become an overwhelming force. Chomsky followed these remarks by suggesting that the polls indicated right-wing Republicans would sweep the next election. This was before 2016. Of course, Republicans seized control of the Senate and upheld their majority in the House of Representatives in 2016's elections, not in 2012's. Ne nevertheless, Chomsky's suggestions that Americans might be open to the appeal of a leader championing the male white, the white male demographic, and American military superiority. Interesting. Hello, Thomas. Did you hear that the truckers are in Canada are providing effect are proving effective? I have heard about that. Chomsky and Hutch would have made a great buddy buddy move. <laughs> I need to look more into Chomsky because I to be honest with you, I don't know a whole lot about that. I, or about him. Interesting. So he predicted a Trump. They also wanted to arrest the truckers and then back down. Well, I saw that. So in Canada, they were uh, some of the truckers were blockading um, a a border, and they wanted hello. They wanted their trucks to be towed, but every tow company that they called, they were like, "I'm sorry, we don't have anyone to go out. All of our truckers are sick with COVID." I know it's all it's all propaganda. They're they're doing the same thing. They're reading from America's playbook basically. They're just trying to um it's a bunch of white supremacists. Whoa, since we're here. Interesting. This isn't locked, is it? So do you guys remember 
Do you guys remember uh, Leah Thomas? Leah Thompson, or Thomas. Leah Thomas is on the UPenn swimming team. And this is, uh, Leah Thomas used to be Will Thomas and started taking uh, testosterone suppressants, I think like a year or two ago, was on the male swim team for several years. And then because the NCAA rule is that you only have to take testosterone suppressants for one year, you don't have to change anything about your body. That's all you have to do. And then you can join the women's team. Well, that's what Leah did. So Will, the Leah, who used to be Will, still has all the male parts. Looks very, you know, 6'2 six, six, or 6'3, broad shoulders, and has been competing on the women's swim team and has been just crushing records left and right. And some of the members of the swim team have come out anonymously and they have said, we are really upset about this. We have no chance to win. Leah is crushing all these records. We're always going to be, you know, second place. They also, a few of them also recently come out and said, we have to share a locker room with Leah and Leah still has male parts. Leah has also said that Leah is still attracted to women and it's really uncomfortable. Sometimes we have seen the male parts in the locker room. And so that's kind of where it left off. And they've complained about this to coaches and stuff. And they, they've they been told, sorry, you just have to deal with it. I'm sorry. Uh, so this actually, I haven't read this article, so we, we can read it together. But um, it says, so basically the NCAA championships are coming up soon. And it says Leah Thomas may be out of NCAA championships after new USA swimming rules. So it looks like something just changed. Let's read it together. University of Penn swimmer Leah Thomas, formerly known as Will Thomas, may be barred from competing in the NCAA championships in Atlanta this March after swimming, after USA Swimming updated its rules. On Tuesday, USA Swimming announced that competitors in women's events must have recorded low levels of testosterone for 33 month, 36 months. The previous rule required only one year. Thomas began transitioning in May 2019. I still don't think that's good enough. I just don't think that a biological male should be competing in women's sports just regardless. But let's read on. USA Swimming wrote, At the elite level, a policy has been created for transgender athlete participation in the U.S. that relies on science and medical evidence-based methods to provide a level playing field for elite cisgender. I hate that term, cisgender. I can't stand it. It's just a woman. And to mitigate the advantages associated with male puberty and physiology, elite athletes shall include any athlete who has achieved a time standard and desires to participate in elite events by the divine policy. The elite athlete policy will be implemented by a decision-making panel comprised of three independent medical experts and eligibility criteria, which will consist of evidence that the prior physical development of the athlete as a male as mitigated by any evidence intervention does not give the athlete a competitive advantage over the athlete's cisgender female competitors. Can we stop saying cisgender? Evidence uh, that the concentration of testosterone in the athlete's serum has been less than blah, 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 medical terms, continuously for a period of at least 36 months before the date of application. So that's three years. Mount Sinai Hospital states that normal... Me- okay, we don't need to go into all of that. Someone said, I have nothing nice to say about this subject. It's all BS. I agree. So Jennifer Bracaris, I don't know how to pronounce that, director of Independent Women's Law Center, said to Daily Mail, USA Swimming's insistence that there is some way to eliminate the athletic advantage that post-pubescent males have over females denies science. 
but it also ignores the fact that this is not only about fair competition, it's also about equal opportunity to compete at all, allowing male-bodied athletes to compete on limited roster teams inevitably means that there are fewer opportunities for female athletes to be recruited, to receive a scholarship, to participate in competitions. Caitlyn Jenner said, I've said it from the beginning, biological boys should not be playing in women's sports. We need to protect women's sports. First of all, I respect her decision to live her life authentically, 100%. She's speaking of Leah Thomas. Um, but that also comes with responsibility and some integrity. I don't know why Leah is doing this. Jenner added that Thomas is also is also not good for women's sports. It's unfortunate that this is happening. I don't know why Leah is doing this. Leah knows that when Leah's swimming, Leah's beating the competition by two laps. Leah was born a biological boy. Leah was raised as a biological boy. Leah's cardio cardiovascular system is bigger. Leah's rep respiratory system is bigger. Leah's hands are bigger. Leah can swim faster. That's known. All of this woke world that we are living in right now is not working. I feel sorry for the other athletes that are out there, especially at Penn or anyone else Leah is competing against. Because in the woke world, you have to say, oh my gosh, that's so great. But it's not. So we'll see what happens with this. So according to the rule now, which I still don't agree with, I don't think it's good enough. I agree with the Women's Independent Law Center. Um, I don't think it's good enough, but it'll be interesting to see if Leah meets this new criteria. I don't know if you know this as well. And here's the thing too. This is what's really sad. The school clearly would have a little bias in this situation because they want to win. And with Leah competing on the women's swim team, they have more of a chance to win. So clearly they, they have incentive for Leah to be on the team. And it's sad because these girls are being told, sorry, you have to suck it up. You have to be uncomfortable. <laughs> and how, how sexist and misogynistic is it for all of these women to have to suck it up and take it for the comfort of one man like you want to talk about misogyny and sexism there's your misogyny and sexism and they're being told to be quiet they're being told they're saying hey i'm uncomfortable in this locker room because there's penis in it and they're being told sorry you just have to suck it up for the comfort of one person all everyone else has to be uncomfortable and that really speaks to the character of this person exactly what Caitlyn Jenner said, why are you doing this? You know it's not fair. You know it's not wrong. You know it's not right. Why would you do that? Caitlyn Jenner also said, it, it didn't say it in what I just read, but Caitlyn Jenner also said, you know, going through a transition, it comes with a little bit of responsibility and a little bit of integrity. And uh, I also want to reiterate that there's a lot of people that are trans that do not agree with this. So Leah and, and the people that are calling women who speak out against this TERFs or transphobic, they do not speak for the majority, I would think, of people that are trans. I think a lot of people that are trans completely understand that this is wrong and would never do this and don't think it's okay. Anyway. But the school also said, hold on. Okay, so this came out a few days ago too. Uh, someone said they should just boycott. I know, no, they should. And, and that's what's frustrating because I can talk about this, but I don't have skin in this game. I mean, clearly I'm a woman, so I, I care about these issues. But as far as like women's sports, I'm not planning on playing women's sports anytime soon. I'm not. Eva, no. Eva, no. Move. Oh my gosh, hold on a second. <laughs> okay, she moved. <laughs> God, she's so bad. Eva attacks. Yeah, I don't have skin in this game. I'm not planning on playing women's sports anytime soon, so I can talk about it till I'm blue in the face, but 
those affected have to do something. The parents have to do something. Listen to what the school is saying now. So the school is saying UPenn is considering a lawsuit if trans swimmer Leah Thomas is barred from the NCAA championship in March. <laughs> no the taco truck if you follow me on instagram i posted a video of the taco truck but that was a while ago i was just thinking about it since we were talking about it i don't need a watchdog you're right i have a cat that is scary <laughs> it is big So how, how screwed up is that? Even when the NCAA is like, okay, we're rethinking this. This is unfair. They're like, no, we're going to sue. It, it clearly, how screwed up is that to know that your school, wait, did you buy? No, I didn't buy a new house yet. How screwed up is that to know that your school doesn't have your back? Really good. What's today? Wednesday? Cats rule. Dogs drool. I hope everyone is having a really good Wednesday. And I'll see you later. I'll probably be live tomorrow night. I'll, I'll let you know what time before tomorrow night. Eva? Okay, she's fine. Someone said not to change the subject, but what are they going to do about Whoopi? They are suspending her for two weeks. Yes, please hit the thumbs up before you go. Is it snowing there? No, it is not snowing. It's actually really nice. It's like t-shirt weather today in Virginia. It's not snowing at all. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a lovely day. and I'll, I'll see you if you want to join tomorrow. <laughs> also, she's Karen. I did see that. Silly. Okay, bye, you all. <laughs>